Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and it's finally time to test the harvesting bar again on my simple flow-through worm composter. This thing's been actually in my basement this winter, and it kind of got behind some stuff in my storage room slash workshop, and I didn't feed the worms like I should have. They're fine, but I don't think the colony has really thrived through the winter. So my plan for today is to harvest what's in here um, and hopefully the harvesting bar shows us how it's going to work a little better than it did last time. If you remember last time, it was still mostly the startup soil that I had in the bottom of the bin and it kind of crumbled out. But the castings are going to be a lot more soft and squishy and they're going to really need that slice to make them drop down. Got here in this tray just what fell out of the bottom during the winter. There's a little bit of castings here, but again, it's mostly the clay that I had in there, the native Georgia soil, which is kind of the opposite of castings. So I'm gonna put this underneath, and then we're gonna give this harvesting bar a test. But I'm gonna empty it out first so we see exactly what we're working with. Gonna give you a nice low angle so you can see what happens. And you can see the metal plate here that I used to replace the trimmer wire. The trimmer wire just wasn't conducive to this thing sliding. Here we go. All right, so that was a pretty decent harvest there. And let's take a look in the top. So the worms that are still in here are pretty small. You can see how our finished castings are looking here on top. Still a little bit of bedding left over. Oh yeah. So here's some healthier worms here, a little bit bigger. That's what I'm looking to see. And those are some finished castings. Got some other critters in here as well, which is what you should expect is an ecosystem, not just the worms, but mites and a lot of times I'll see earwigs. So you can see how The castings are just supported in an arch there, basically. If I were to push down on this, the whole thing would probably fall out. Actually, let's tilt this up real quick and take a look. So here is our harvesting bar here. For those of you who didn't watch the first build video, it's actually got a sharpened edge, a slightly sharpened edge on the other side here be able to slice through. So there is still a good bit of clay left over from my preload there. So see if I can scrape a little bit of that out. The true test of this would be when we're dealing with 100% casting, which it looks on, like on this side that we were down to just castings on the bottom. All right, so a pretty nice batch of soil that's supercharged with worm castings. And I'm actually gonna use this to start some seeds in a tray, a great use for something like this. And there's a few worms in here. I'm not surprised by that, just cause they're, I didn't have a super tall soil column in there to let the worms migrate up. Here's a nice chunk of finished castings. Oh, that's so good. School of Rock is happening again this week, which you can here in the background. 
My son is not over there this week, but they have a different set of campers. They rocked out, by the way. Here's a clip. Okay, here's our screen. Underneath the side when it's in the composting position versus the harvesting position. Little diagram here to show me which side the blade is on. Slide this back over. That is a nice take. I'm happy with that. Beautiful stuff. And the clay that's in there has actually started to darken a little bit. And it's a lot more brittle, which tells me that it's also getting infused with nutrients from the worm bin. You can see there's the the native red color it went in with. Alright, we'll set this aside and use it to load up some plant trays. Alright, let's reset it. I'm actually going to start by just kind of working down what's in here. The last of the clay. I might just pull this out. see the top of the harvesting bar right there. So that's as deep as that next slice is going to go. So I'm going to start out by a nice thick layer of newspaper bedding. And then I'm going to wet that down with some rainwater. Chlorinated water is okay, or tap water is okay as long as you let it sit out for 24 hours. The chlorine will dissipate over that time into the air. It'll evaporate and then it won't have a negative impact on the worms or on the biological community that you want to foster in your composter. Also here on this bottom layer, I'm gonna add in some charcoal just from my um, bread oven. Leftovers of some untreated wood that I burned there to make bread. If you're curious to see that build, I'll put a link above here to that for my cob bread oven. So I'm going to crunch this up in not super small chunks, but the reason I'm adding this isn't for the worms, but it's for to provide a substrate, basically a habitat for bacteria that also are in this composter. That's basically going to activate this charcoal. And when I add this to the garden, that this, the bacteria colonies in here are going to really help the soil. So this is something you can add to your worm composter, charcoal. Just make sure it's from untreated wood. Even sizes like this are just fine. Another thing I'm going to be adding to the composter is grit. In this case, my grit source is sand that I've scavenged from the creek across the street. I'm just going to put a little bit down here. As the worms process the compostable material, they actually will bring grit in with that. And that, it, these actually function like the teeth of the worms uh, to kind of break down the matter as it passes through the worm itself. So grit is an important addition to your worm composter. So because I'm operating multiple composters, my solidify larva composter, which I'll link above, and a couple worm composters, several worm towers, relying on my own family's food scraps is not enough to sustain everybody. So. I go over to the local restaurant and with their permission, get their food waste. When I'm working with restaurant food scraps, I'm always gonna wanna wear a, a glove. So in here, in this bag, I've got a lot of food waste. Some of it is gonna go into the soldier fry larva composter because they can take pretty much anything, meat, dairy, bread, 
a lot of stuff worms won't but I'm gonna pull the the vegetable the lettuce mainly out of here and put it into the composter this was not something that they pre-sorted for me which they do I just grabbed this out of the dumpster there are easier ways to get this so next I'm gonna be adding a layer of food scraps into the composter a little more bedding and a little more grit and a little more water. Uncle Jim's ships the worms dehydrated so they are less susceptible to temperature. So the first thing you do when you get them is get them out of the bag, put them into a bucket or a bin, and add about a half a cup of water to start their rehydration process. I'll let this sit like this overnight and I'm gonna install the worms into my bins and worm towers tomorrow. I am gonna put a lid on this bucket tonight because they might crawl out. Let's see how they're doing. So they were in the dark there in my garage and um, you see there's a few here on the lid. I had something heavy on this so that it kept them from being able to crawl up underneath the lid. So I'm gonna record here and let you see how the light will chase them back down into the bin. A few of them may try and escape over the top. I'm just gonna put them back down. So this mingling up here on the sides of the bucket, that's where baby worms are made. So they're night crawlers, so when it's night, this is when they climb up and you can see there's some castings up on the sides. Uncle Jim's recommends that you get them into a proper habitat, a proper worm composting bin within 48 hours. If I want to accelerate this process, I can simply move them into the sun. This is filtered sunlight, so it's enough just to get them moving. Some of these guys are just stubborn. Those are the worms you want around because they got moxie. I'm going to help these last guys down. You can also do this at night with a light. So now I'm going to add worms and another layer of bedding. Got my temporary home here. And there's actually some compostable stuff in here that uh, is leaves and some spinach that was going bad and some paper towels. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that. There's some worms in there too. Uncle Jim's was kind enough to send me 2,000 worms and they gave me these worms in exchange for me talking about them in a video. But you know, I've talked about Uncle Jim's before even when I was buying worms from them just because they're a great source. Jim actually was the son of a Vermont fisherman and started selling worms to uh, his dad's co-workers um, when he was eight. So he's been in the business for a long time and uh, now his sons are in it as well. Just a great story of entrepreneurship and creativity. I mean, selling worms. He's put three boys and two girls through college with these guys. We have a special coupon for Green Shorts viewers. Use the coupon code Green Shorts with a Z, one word, then you get 10% off. So check out Uncle Jim's WormFarm.com if you're ready to get started worm composting. So I've probably put 500 to 750 worms into this unit. And that's gonna basically supercharge this thing. I'll need to pretty quickly get in another layer of vegetables. I'm gonna go ahead and top this with a, a layer of bedding, more newspaper, just to cover them up and um, protect them. Adding bedding whenever you add new food scraps is also a good way to keep any odors down. One thing I try and avoid when adding newspapers, anything that's got a shiny coating on it. Most of these newspaper inks are gonna be soy-based, except for metallic inks, which you rarely see in newspaper. 
And so none of these, even though this has a lot of color on it, it's not shiny, uh, which would indicate a varnish. So I'm gonna go ahead and be okay adding it this color. A little more grit. So make sure they can find grit wherever they are. And a little more water just to moisten this newspaper down. All right, this is all set up. I'm gonna take the rest of my worms and install them into the worm towers in my garden. So I've actually got three worm towers here in this garden bed. The two PVC worm towers and then a experimental one that I've hollowed out the inside of a log. So I'm gonna put about 200 or so, a handful of worms into each of these towers, along with grit and bedding and food scraps. In addition to newspaper, Corrugated cardboard is also an excellent bedding material. Leaves and wood chips are also another acceptable bedding material. Bedding, worms, food scraps, grit, and water. The last type of worm tower that I have is what I call a bucket worm tower. So it's a five gallon bucket buried in the garden. Same setup. So worms, bedding, grit, and water. And food scraps. Can't forget the food scraps. You can see what the output of this is. This has actually been sitting all winter with just a few worms in it and that's pretty rich stuff down there. And the rest of my worms, probably 500 or so, are gonna go in here. The beauty of these worm towers is that they are no maintenance, or very little maintenance. If you don't have any food scraps, which I'm out of them right now, I'm just gonna add some weed waste here. All my paper towels go in the worm composter. Just as a case in point, the green pepper plant that is next to the worm composter here has three peppers on it. And the one that's further away has one. Now that plant just might have been more sturdy to start, but I like this. Nutrients right to the roots, right down there. Organic nutrients at that. This basil is going crazy, also right next to this. I've got holes in the top of this that allow rainwater to go in, um, allow that water to push out into the garden bed, deliver nutrients to the soil right where it needs it. All right, there you have it, folks. Uh, there's the setup of all of my worm composters, and I've got plans for all of these devices. 
the flow through worm composter, my bucket worm composter. I have a two bucket worm composter that's got one that uh, bucket on the top, uh, one that captures the liquid underneath. It's leachate, not quite worm tea, but you can make it into worm tea. The worm towers are really simple to build, but I've included the plans for all three of my worm towers in one set. I include the plans for my uh, wooden worm tower as well, which I've decommissioned because one thing they do is break down um, and become soil themselves. So you can see there's a nice rich soil inside. I just pulled this one up. It's the beauty of wood for those of you who don't want to use plastic. And all that stuff is available on my website. And it's also a way that if you like what you see here on Green Shorts DIY, then you can help me by supporting the channel by buying plants. Again, special thanks to Uncle Jim for sending me some free worms. Thanks so much, and I'm excited about uh, seeing how they produce in the flow through now that I've got the proper amount of worms in here, as well as the worm towers in the garden be watching those green peppers grow. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. This worm composter purchased on the market would probably be $150 to $200, $300. So you can build it yourself for about 40, well under 40, maybe even as low as 20 depending on the trash can that you buy and if you have some scrap lumber on hand. Please like and share. I also love the comments that you leave with ideas and suggestions and feedback. I've used a lot of them to improve my designs. So this is a community here of ideas and I appreciate when you share yours with me. So thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video almost every Friday.